A very long time ago, there lived two Tanifa. These Tanifa were brothers and their names were Ngāke and Whataitai. Ngāke and Whataitai lived in a lake, as most Tanifa do. Their home was called Te Whanganui Atara. Although their lake was beautiful, they were restless. They dreamed of spending their days swimming far and wide in the ocean. This is the story of how those two brothers turned their lake into Wellington Harbour. The Tanifa had not always been unhappy in their beautiful lake. When they were small, they had enough space to do what pleased them most. Although Ngāke and Whataitai were brothers, they were very different. Ngāke was a big, strong, fierce Tanifa. When he swam, his blue-black scales gleamed like armour. Most of the creatures of the lake feared him. He was fast and deadly. For Taitai did not have the size or violent nature of his brother. He was a gentle tanifa. He did not hunt, and he ate only water plants and weeds. For Taitai echoed the world around him. When the sun shone and the water of the lake was a dazzling turquoise, his scales would glow aqua green. When the sky was grey and the bitter wind howled across the lake, Fataitai would flash silver as he swam through the water. Under the protection of the Tanifa, the lake thrived. There were large shoals of fish and eels swimming in the lake. Flocks of birds inhabited its shores, for Tai Tai was friends with all of them. When Ngāke and for Tai Tai swam to the southern end of their lake, they rested in front of the high cliffs, which separated the lake from the sea. They could hear the waves booming and smell the salt water of Rokawa Moana, Cook Strait. For Tai Tai would talk to the seabirds who would tell tales of the bounty and splendour of Tangaroa's kingdom. Ngāke and Whataitai were enthralled. They told each other the bird stories over and over again, each time exaggerating, adding more excitement and more adventure. As the Tanifa grew bigger, their lake seemed to grow smaller. Eventually, they agreed that they'd outgrow in their home and they would have to find a way out of the lake and into the sea. One sunny morning, Whataitai was floating on his back, looking up to the hills of Korokoro and Maungaraki. He was enjoying the feeling of the sun's warmth on his scaly tummy and the sound of the waves lapping at Pitooni Beach. Suddenly, Ngāke started to swim around and around in circles. He dived straight down to the bottom of the lake, like the seabirds do when they are catching fish. Then he exploded back up through the surface. Fataitai rocked up and down in the wake of his brother. Today we shall break free, roared Ngāke. Fataitai was very excited. Ngāke swam up to Pitooni Beach. He coiled up his long, spiky tail like an enormous spring and fixed his steely gaze in the direction of the ocean. He took a deep breath and unleashed all the power of his great muscles. As his immense tail unwound, it scarred the earth, creating Te Awa Kairangi the Hutt River. Ngāke let out a mighty bellow. He was thrust up and over the lake. He hurtled towards the cliff face. With a crash, he smashed right through the cliffs. The fresh water rushed out from the lake. The salty seawater rushed in. Ngāke swam happily in the sea, just like he had dreamt of doing for so long. He was free at last. He frolicked and dived and tried to entice Fataitai to join him. Fataitai watched his brother swim off and spiral downwards into the depths, out of sight. He desperately wanted to follow, but he was not sure that he could do it. He was not as big or as strong as Ngāke. Fataitai swam to the mouth of the river that Ngāke had made with the lash of his tail. Just like he saw his brother do, He coiled up his own tail and released it like a spring. He took off into the air, sailing through the sky towards the sea. As Fataitai began to fall back towards the water, he realised with horror 
He was badly off course. He called out for help and great flocks of his bird friends came. Hundreds of them flew underneath and beside him. For Tai Tai crash landed into an area of shallow water far to the right of the channel. Covered with rocks, mud and debris, he was stranded between the lake and the sea. For Tai Tai swished his tail back and forth in an increasing panic. He thrashed with his arms and legs, but they were no use. He just dug himself deeper into the mud. He was well and truly stuck. For Tai Tai lived there for years. The mud and rocks on his back began to grow grass and trees. Kelp sprouted around his arms, legs, and puku. For Tai Tai's many animal friends kept him company, and he began to enjoy his strange new life. One day, the earth below the lake began to tremble, and a huge earthquake pushed the enormous tanifa up out of the shallow water. Without the kelp to eat, or water to keep his scales wet, for Tai Tai knew he would not live for long. As for Tai Tai died, his spirit transformed into Tekil, the great white spirit bird. Tekil flew up to the nearest mountain, Matairangi, Mount Victoria, and looked down on the body of the Tanifa. Tekil wept. When she had shed all of her tears, she flew off to the spirit world. The body of Fataitai slowly transformed into the land, which is known today as Hataitai. His bones are the rocks, and his body has a thick coat of lush green bush. He is home to the animals and birds he so loved. The sea creatures play at his feet, and the birds nest on his back. He is happy. Ma Tairangi keeps watch over the body of Fataitai. The summit is still known as Tangi Tekil. Ngāke never returned to Wellington Harbour. Maybe he still lives in the depths of Rokawa Moana. Next time you are on the ferry and have a rough crossing of Cook Strait, just think, that is probably because Ngāke is hunting deep down below you. <laughs>